Professor Sivaraman Venkataraman. He has pursued his Bachelor's of Architecture at the School of Architecture and Planning, SAP, South India's premier academy of architecture and design. He has worked as an architectural student trainee, as an assistant architect, as an associate designer, as an architectural assistant and as an architect at several institutes and organizations. Since May 2013 until date, he has his own consulting practice. Apart from this, he also works as an assistant professor and as a visiting faculty at the Prime College of Architecture and Planning, Anna University. He has also worked as an associate professor and as a visiting faculty at Deer Institute, Anna University and at Midas Swarnabhumi, Anna University. He has won four gold medals and silver medal in national level competitions organized by Rashtriya Sanskrit Sansthan representing Tamil Nadu for the past consecutive five years. This is AR6203 Theory of Architecture Part 2 Unit 3 Part 2. So we were talking about the works of architects in that who made uh, a great uh, influence in architecture deriving architectural form and we were trying to understand the character and style of uh, uh, the architects through which uh, what, what their search of uh, uh, form developed. So this will be the part 2 of it. I am going to go through some more uh, architectural work. I will start with the more contemporary ones this time. Daniel Libeskind has been a contemporary architect. See the kind of emergence of form. He was one of the deconstructivist. I am quickly going through some of his works so that we will understand the different kinds of forms people have tried to emerge, the creators have emerged in the contemporary times. They are highly influenced by the way materials have come to form, the unconventional way of designing buildings. This is one of the most influential buildings designed by uh, Daniel Libeskind. This is a Holocaust Museum, Jewish Museum in Berlin. He has derived this, this from the the star of David as a plan, the interiors of the building. It is a museum, holocaust museum which is to express the, the sorrow of the people who were in the concentration camps. So, you can see the stark reality of uh, the, the interiors. He wanted to influence that, he wanted to bring the influence of that into, into his architecture. This is the Ontario Museum designed by Liebeskind. This is the Run Run Shah Media Center in China. I am quickly going through the, the great architecture of the contemporary times from different works of architects. This group of people called the Star Architects, the Star Architects. This is Frank Gehry. This is the Beekman Tower in New York. See how the high rise building has has taken its form by an influential architect. So, he has just used a simple maneuver of twisting it. This is the famous Fred and Ginger building in the historic parts of Prague in Czechoslovakia. This is very typical of Franco Gehry, the Disney Hall is a music project museum, the Guggenheim Bilbao. You can see the kind of style that he has emerged. He, free usage of metallic forms in his building. There are no conventional openings, windows, doors, straight lines, lines. You cannot quite see where it starts, where it ends. Some of the sketches, earlier sketches of him. It's again the Guggenheim Museum, Bilbao, the aerial view. It's one of his earlier works, the Loyola Law School. See how unconventionally he uses the elements, colors, the way it struts out this is one of the houses that he has designed earlier. I would like to quickly take you through another influential architect of our region. This is Geoffrey Bawa from Sri Lanka. See how he used spaces appropriate for his region. He says that building has to live with nature, nature has to be in the building. So, there are no inside or outside it is all part of the nature. He creates nature inside the buildings. This is a typical drawing by Geoffrey Bawa. You will see nature inside the building as well as outside the building in the plan. It is not very clear cut. Look at this. 
this is also much needed for the tropical country that he lives in Sri Lanka. Look at the way the organic architecture has developed. This is a resort in Sigiriya in Sri Lanka. This goes along with the hill. This architect is perhaps the most popular and commercial architect of India. In India, a multicultural land like India, the forms always have to be eye popping. Look at this building which was a software building for Infosys, software giant in Bangalore. This is a later building by him. This is in India. So, this transformed the whole country into a new level, very unconventional building for an IT building. This is the ONGC building in Hyderabad, this is a proposal given by him. Can we believe this is in India? These are the kind of buildings that he has offered to change the skyline of Mumbai, the commercial capital of India. This is Sapunji Palonji Towers in Mumbai. He is a very influential architect, so to say, of India. Herzog and Demuron are probably the most popular among architects themselves. They were the star, star architects again, there's a couple of architects, two of them designing exemplary works in the world and making marks in every continent of the world. This is an Actelion Center, State Gallery Extension in New York. See how they emerge forms from stop being conventional and being eye popping. This is a very famous earlier work of them. This is a Vitra house in Germany. I am not taking the example of the Chinese Olympic Stadium. This is Jean Nouvel, another influential living architect, contemporary architect from uh, France. See how his uh, architecture emerged. So, Jean Nouvel is from France which invites a lot of North Africans into his country and then this is the Arab Institute building, the Arab World Institute building in Paris. Even though he is not a, uh, he does not belong to the Islamic community, he in, he gets influences from the Islamic um, world and includes the motive of great Islamic architecture into his building. This is in glass, it is a detail of the facade. This is the Arab World Institute massing that he has done, but he has given the whole exterior a glass facade which had details like this. So, it can be immediately identified as a building that belonged to Islamic culture. This is the Al Burj of Doha in Qatar. See how he has used the patterns, the geometric patterns so visible in Mughal architecture, in Persian architecture into his into his modern building. This is Al Burj in Doha. This is the exterior of the building. The next one is a view from inside, highly recognizable building. You can immediately say this is this belongs to the Islamic community by way of its profile, but it is still a very contemporary building used with steel and glass. This is a Chelsea gallery in New York. See how it is used very uh, glass unconventionally on the facade. It is still with a lot of form, but still unorganized, but still highly recognizable and unique. This is the Tor Akbar building in Barcelona is a high rise tower in Barcelona. See how he has used a form influenced the phallic building just like in uh, the previously seen Doha Al Burj. You can see how he is easily influenced by the greatness of transparency outside the building. That is Jean Nouvel from France. I will take you to another important architect of our times. This is Dr. Ken Yang from Malaysia. He is a groundbreaking architect. Why? Because he knew the importance of tall buildings, but then he brings in the nature inside the tall buildings and he is one of the greatest exponents of the vertical forms, the vertical gardens. This is one of his earliest building called the Minara Misiniaga, in which he used the part of exterior to be in nature itself. This is a typical detail of a building that he has designed. You can see greenery everywhere in the building vertically. This is a Mimar building proposal in Malaysia. You can see greenery everywhere. 
you won't miss greenery in a vertical building so vertical farming has taken a new step these days so nowadays you don't need to worry about being with nature in an urban area that's dr ken yang ken yang associates from malaysia the typical ken yang building see the greenery who would not love to live in this building so his farm has emerged from going vertical at the same time bringing nature inside india has the greatest offering from his side this is a lorry baker a foreigner who settled in india and this is the kind of architecture that he offers to indians he was highly influenced by gandhian principles so he brings in the idea of appropriateness in the building he, he uses waste materials in his buildings less used materials the locally available materials the low cost construction that his can you believe this is his own house in tiruvananthapuram he lives along with nature designs at site handmade buildings this is inside the urban area of tiruvananthapuram this is an indian coffee house building this is spiral building it's done with low cost construction techniques this is the institute of development studies in tiruvananthapuram this building has incorporated all his ideas of using sun control elements in his building the jali works the local craftsmanship the brilliant usage of materials the creative materials the creative usage of materials simple structure using unconventional way of casting fill slabs he says i never build for classes of people high income or middle or low income groups tribals or fishermen i build for that particular person who is what is appropriate for them that is what he means that is the greatness of architect from india lori baker louis baragan is an award winning architect from mexico his buildings are immediately recognized by the kind of forms and colors that he uses this is typical building of louis baragan is a casa gallardi in mexico he uses the vibrant colors of tropical nature in his buildings you can see the the brilliant use of colors that plays in the tropical sun simple forms very strong very bold and very influencing very photographic as well he also designs urban squares designed urban squares with very strong colors which form strong images and landmarks this is the satellite towers in mexico city basic colors simple colors simple forms but very strong in its nature simple lines just the colors and the textures that varies and gives in a strong image and strong character to the building that's louis baragan typical louis baragan scenario here from here i take you to another contrasting example from india very lesser known but highly influential architect this is nari gandhi like his name give his idea of organic architecture has taken uh, into different fields though his works are very very less every of his work has been highly preserved now because he has used materials that is very unconventional and he is not dependent on architectural drawings he builds them hands on so this is organic architecture very natural very close to the nature very unconventional too it looks like your building has grown from nature so he is a man to go for in organic architecture no need to say that he was highly influenced by fl right himself the pursuit of form has taken architects into different fields different uh, inspirations this is lord norman foster one of the greatest living legends of architecture he was given knighthood by the queen very recently this is lord norman foster's buildings he believes in structures he was a great student of buckminster fuller the structuralist and theorist and the architect of uk he understood materials he brings in new materials into buildings and then he thinks architecture has to have great combination of geometry and nature this building which kind of resembles a cucumber is indeed called the gherkin building in london is one of the 
very highly recognizable building in London, the high rise building, office building in London. See how he uses structural elements, this is the Hearst Towers in London. He uses a simple module of the triangle to bring in great building, another highly recognizable building in Hong Kong, this is a HSBC building. He not only designs buildings, but also influences in building great structures of the around the world. This is one of the longest viaduct in the world, the Millaus viaduct in France, that is Lord Norman Foster. Peter Eisenman has been an architect who broke ground with his deconstructivist style. Here you can see his style of building very unconventionally. He takes the conventional buildings and then makes them clash into making impactive buildings. This is the Columbus Convention Center. This is the way he expresses emotion in buildings. This is the Holocaust Memorial Building in Berlin. He says that all the victims of the Holocaust is the same. So, why should the uh, memorial be different? This is the inside of the memorial. The starkness of the Holocaust being expressed in his architecture. This is Eisenman house, this is the way he interprets house, it is slightly a take from modernism. He along with other architects of America designed this International Academy of Architecture. Rem Kulas have been another great man in architecture today, he is a theorist himself. And then he has been behind influencing lot of young architects to come up, for example, like Zaha Hadid and BRK Ingels. This is Casa Musica, the way he has emerged forms is quite evident, he wants to be unconventional as well. The Casa Musica, a building for music, it is an auditorium. One another highly recognizable building of him is the CCTV building in Shanghai in China. It is a structural marvel, it is one of the most beautiful buildings of the world today. See the unconventional thinking and the unconventional architecture. This is the Netherlands embassy building in Berlin, another way of expressing his architecture. This is the interlaced housing building which won many awards last year and this is based in Singapore. He runs with a firm called Office for the Metropolitan Architecture. See the unconventional way of housing, he says that this building gives each one individuality, even though they all live in, in one whole, the interlace housing. This is another immediately recognizable building in uh, United States, the Seattle State Library building. Rem Kulas have written a lot of book on architecture, been widely a theorist. I would now go on to another influential architecture of our times. And my personal favorite himself is architect Renzo Piano of Italy. I would like to quickly go through his some architectural marvel of him. This is the Bern tourism building in Bern. See the way he uses materials. This is one exemplary building in New Caledonia, an island country in the Pacific. He has designed a art center for them, the art and cultural center which is beautifully seen from, uh, from the sea like those barriers used by tribals, such a beautiful building. This is a Pompidou center which is a competition winner in Paris. This is one of the fine examples of brutalism which means to say that all the materials are exposed like in an industry, but this building is a cultural center, this holds a library a museum and a convention center, this is in Paris the Pompidou center and the Shard in London is a very highly recognizable building, right now currently the tallest building in the whole of UK, Shard, Shard means the sharp glass piece, it looks like a building which is like a glass piece standing vertically, see how has emerged a form, the Shard in London. This is Renzo Piano. Ricardo Legoreta has been another Mexican architect from the South America, whose buildings are immediately recognizable by 
the form and the colors as you can see. He perhaps was a great follower of Louis Barragan himself. See the kind of architecture then the colors that he have used. His buildings are immediately recognizable by the simple forms and the colors. This is a university building that he has done in Mexico. See the very unconventional colors that he has used for his building. The colors of red, pink. In total contrast to him, Ricardo Legarata's architecture, we see another architect. I am going to ask you a question just after this one. Just go through his buildings, Richard Meyer's Douglas House. You can easily recognize his buildings immediately. This is a jetty center. So, what is common in all his buildings? This is another highly recognized building of him in Rome. This is a Jubilee Church in Rome. So, what is common in all these things? Well, you can see that all his buildings are purely white. They are purely white and then they are all on a grid form. You can see there are horizontal and vertical lines on the building like claddings. When you look closely, they all have a grid which is like deformed into different uh, shapes and openings and purely white in color. You won't see any other color in his buildings. So, that is Richard Meyer. His architecture is immediately recognizable by the way he uses one single color. So, that is his character. So, he wants to express purity. Richard Rogers is another modernist who worked along with Renzo Piano. This is a millennium dome that he got influenced by Pierre Luigi Nevis architecture. His architecture has to be studied in order to really get a grip of how forms and buildings made recognizable. Santiago Calatrava, his buildings are highly influential because he was a structural designer as well. He, build, he builds his buildings like immediately recognizable is one of his buildings that looks torso tower. This building like a bird ready to fly. There are structural marvels. Shigeru Ban is unconventional building with cardboards. These are the buildings he has done for the earthquake prone Christ church in New Zealand. Shigeru Ban is another building by him by using unconventional materials ready to withstand earthquake. Tadawa Ando, another Japanese architect who did not formally study architecture, but he studied the works of architects and then became an architect himself. He was highly influenced by architecture of Louis Kahn and Kabuzier, which is recognizable from his building. This is a church of light, such beautiful architecture. And finally, we have Zaha Hadid, the star architect whose buildings express freedom and dynamism. With that, I would like to conclude the works of architects. What I have shown you is only a certain part of the great architectural uh, pool of works, but I have just taken 40 or 30 of them to just give you an idea of how forms been evolved by different characters. The, the conclusion to summarize would be again the same. You have to choose a prominent building by an architect or an architect and his work and then to develop the way he has expressed uh, um, and symbolized and how did he communicate through his form and search of architect, uh, architecture uh, through his ideologies and philosophy. And uh, some inquisition that you can make through the works is goes such as this, architecture as a human product, how architecture influences buildings from a particular period, why they have particular form, how it is used as a sensitive medium and how formal differentiation for function of buildings is required. Thank you.